With China's COVID emergency assuming front stage, are businesses prepared for the impact? Does India stand to benefit from the ongoing crisis in China? Rahul Kawal, news editor, India Today and Aaj Tak, takes stock of the situation unraveling in China with industry experts. Adar Poonawala, chairman and CEO of the Serum Institute and Tata Steel, Stevie Narendran. Take a look. Great. Give us your sense of what's happening inside China. Great to uh, be here with you, Rahul. You know, um, a lot of uh, people here from different parts of the world have been concerned about China. And of course, being our close neighbors, uh, we're watching uh, how the situation unravels. Uh, India, because of its excellent vaccine coverage and the herd immunity, because we allowed infections uh, uh, to, to spread like other countries and didn't have a zero COVID policy after the initial lockdowns, India, along with other countries, are in a far better situation. Um, do I fear, you know, this sort of thing happening in India again, like what's happening in China? I don't think so, because as I mentioned, our vaccine has been very effective and the coverage has been very effective. Um, China, sadly, has not had both of those uh, situations pan out and we just pray and hope that um, they solve their issue. In fact, I was talking to some people to try and offer the Western vaccines and Indian vaccines to them as boosters so they, they can control their hospitalizations and come out of even spreading the infection. Are the Chinese further. interested in your vaccine? You know, uh, I've requested to them to put political issues aside and just look at the bigger picture because, you know, for the world it's important that China comes back also. Um, uh, you know, and we just wish them the best and uh, speedy recovery because if you look at supply chain disruptions, investments, uncertainty, people are still a little uncertain to, to make investments in this part of the world because of what's happening there. But of course, given that you've seen the response here, India is definitely by far the uh, most reliable and chosen uh, destination for investors. And uh, given the choice, of course, India stands uh, far ahead. I started by asking Adar about what's happening in China because what's happening in China from a health emergency perspective also is potentially one of the biggest opportunities for India as global companies realign their supply chains. To what extent do you think at this moment, in the way things are, is India being able to benefit from the idea that companies need to look beyond China and this China plus one strategy of it? I think that's playing out uh, quite favorably for India, you know, because uh, the uh, aftershocks of what not what just happened in China but also what's happened in Ukraine and Russia has made uh, organizations global companies look at de-risking supply chains is no longer about cost optimization but about resilience managing risks etc so when they're looking at another place beyond China obviously there are other contenders but India is special because India is not just a source it can also be a market and with the PLI schemes and the government uh, trying to do more to attract investments, uh, there is certainly a strong case for investments to come into India, which you've seen in electronics and traditionally areas where we've not seen so much of investments. So I think it's a good time for India. Actually to be one of the beneficiaries along with say a Vietnam, Indonesia, or some other countries, or do you see India as being the prime beneficiary because companies are now desperate to move part of their supply chains out of China? You know, the de-risking of supply chains actually started maybe a few years back. It uh, got triggered first with Fukushima because that disrupted a lot of supply chains. Uh, at that time when people were looking at a choice beyond China, most people went to Vietnam actually. Textile industry went to Bangladesh. I think India lost out in that wave. I think at this time India is being positioned better. I think the policies are more favorable for investments. Uh, the Indian market is also showing a lot more potential and promise. Uh, so I think now it seems to be that the stars are aligned in favor of India. It's for us to mess it up. But having said that, I think while at the central level we're doing a lot of work, finally the investments happen at the states. So a lot depends on how the states also deal with this opportunity. I'm happy to see a lot of states here trying to market themselves. But I think ultimately investors will look at the experience that they have and they really come and put money on the ground. Do you see India Inc. investing in the India story? given that cap capacity utilization has been in the mid-70s for a long time, Tata Steel has announced big capital expenditure plans, but a lot of India Inc. still holding back. Do you see that change or do you think global turbulence will mean that companies would like to stay on the fence for a little longer? So if you are an export driven uh, uh, company, then obviously you would look at what's happening globally. But if you are primarily dependent on Indian demand, like a lot of the steel industries, then you would invest because the, the government focus on 
infrastructure, India is seeing infrastructure led growth, investment led growth, traditionally it's been consumption led growth. Uh, so that's making it uh, better. But if you really look at private sector investment 10 years back, the three big sectors were steel, power and chemicals. Power is pretty much gone out because those were thermal power plants, coal based power plants, now it's more renewables. But I think steel and chemicals is coming back. Steel has certainly come back, last six months we had a problem. But otherwise, way, steel is certainly coming back on track for investments. I see a lot of investments in supply chains, for instance, warehousing, supply chains, and electronics manufacturing.